Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at the rather wonderful Logitech K780 multifunction keyboard. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at Logitech's K780 multifunction keyboard, or I should say rather multi device keyboard. This essentially is, for a broad stroke, is basically a multi-PC or multi-device keyboard. So it has the ability to connect up to three different devices, and you can connect them either via Logitech's own unifying receiver or via Bluetooth, which opens up a whole wealth of opportunities. So you can connect it to things such as your Android device, so mobile phone, your iOS device, mobiles, iPads, that kind of thing, or even if you want to, something like Microsoft's own Surface Pro range, which also have Bluetooth built in and that actually works particularly well as you'll see from some of the footage. I've actually been using this with my Surface Pro 3 and also with my iPhone and also with my desktop PC. So it is a very much a multi-device keyboard. So anyway, let's go through, we'll go through the unboxing process. There isn't really a great deal to unbox, but we'll go through some of the features. We'll talk about the software, show you how to use it, some of the things which I find a little bit frustrating, some of the things which I find really good. And at the end, you can work out whether or not this is gonna be the keyboard for you. So first of all, looking at the packaging, as you can see, it is the multi-device, the K780. It shows you on the front of the box there, basically a typical setup. So there is a iPhone there resting in the dock at the top. And basically, yeah, you can see it's a full-size keyboard. Although you're looking around about 96% of a full-size keyboard, so it's pretty much there. You've got all the usual features. So you've got all your function buttons. You've also got a separate numeric keypad, which is a really nice addition. I, for one, actually do prefer having a numpad, but let me know in the comments what are your thoughts. Also on the box, it does say, as I've said already, so it works with Windows, Mac, Chrome OS, Android, and iOS. So pretty much most of the common things on the market right now. You've also got OS adaptive features. So what I mean by that is you can actually use this and have the commanding function keys work in both Windows environments and also Mac OS. Very easy to do, just press the function key and O for iOS, and just press the function key and P for Windows devices and it will swap over the relevant function keys, which is actually a really nice little feature. Other things of note on there, so it does state up to, uh, bizarrely, a 24 month battery life. Now, I've only had this very recently, so I cannot confirm or deny those rumors. And obviously, depending on the quality of batteries you use, then your mileage may vary and also obviously how much you're using it. It does come supplied with Duracell batteries, which generally are rated as being very good and should give you a decent lifespan. So yeah, I won't confirm or deny that one. Also has up to a 10 meter radius on the Bluetooth and with the unifying receiver as well, you're looking at a very similar sort of range. So if you want to use this as a keyboard on your lap, if for media centers, that kind of thing, very easy to do so. And also obviously if you're using it for things like possibly maybe even a projector, that kind of thing, you can potentially use it in that sort of instance as well. When you open up the box and look inside and take out your keyboard, there is actually laid out a very kind of schematic way of actually how you connect all these devices up. Something which I would note on this is if you're using this in a Windows device, even though it does say there how to do things, something which it doesn't mention is the fact that you're probably going to have to install the unifying software, which we'll be taking a look at a little bit later on in the video. I actually had a real hard time actually connecting this for the first time to my PC. So yeah, do bear that in mind. If you're struggling with this and you turn it on, and for some reason it's not working following these instructions here, it might be because you haven't had the pop-up on your PC saying to install the unifying software and also Logitech options. Okay, so let's take a look at the keyboard itself. Now, one of the first things you're gonna notice when you take this out of the box or actually when you receive the box is how heavy it is. It is actually a very heavy unit, which is actually good for multiple things. Obviously, if you've got your prized possession, such as your iPad or maybe your Surface Pro, and you've got it in this section here, the last thing you want is this thing flipping up, which is extremely unlikely to do due to the weight of it and actually due to the angles that the actual stand itself employs. As you can see there, it's a nice, almost triangle-like section, so it's gonna be very good for that. They do suggest that it's only supported for up to kind of around about 12 or to 13 inch devices. So obviously don't be putting things in, in here which are considerably larger, but for most tablets and devices, you're gonna be absolutely fine. Also, this back section does have a somewhat rubberized coating on there, so don't worry about scratching or damaging any of your components. They're gonna be nicely seated in there. Taking a quick tour of the keyboard itself, so we've got pretty much all the usual stuff you'd expect to see on both Android, iOS, and Windows devices. So you've got sections here, so you've got the home button, the menu button, and the back button. So that's gonna be most useful for your kind of Android devices, that sort of thing. But they do actually double up as other features, such as open up 
Google or your browser of choice, right click and obviously going back, that kind of thing. The main three buttons here, which I like to see actually, there is a smaller version of this, which I think is the K380, which is uh, considerably smaller, but they've actually got those buttons in yellow, which is a little bit off-putting in my opinion. The way they've actually done this color-wise, where you've got this kind of white section here, or slightly gray with a speckled effect, and also you've got the white buttons there on this matte black keyboard, I think design-wise actually does make quite a statement. And also the keys themselves, as you can see, they are a circular design, and most of the other larger keys are somewhat of a, almost like a speech bubble type design. I personally really like typing on this sort of keyboard. Now, there's gonna be a lot of people out there that like their mechanical keyboards and you like your clicky switches and all that kind of thing. But actually for a lot of people, if you're in a working environment or you're just trying to get work done quickly, this kind of chiclet style low profile keyboard actually does pay off benefits in terms of noise and actually words per minute. Other things of note, so along this top section here, we've got all the media function keys. These are dual purpose keys, so they are your function keys as well. There is an option in the software, which we'll take a look at later, so you can actually set those so they are either function keys or media keys. If you wanna switch between the two, press and hold the function button and your button of choice, and obviously it'll switch between the two which are labeled on the buttons, which is something actually we should talk about. The actual buttons themselves, the actual logos or legend on them is kind of stuck on or printed on. It isn't embossed or etched, which would have been nice. That obviously after a few years probably is gonna wear off a little bit, so do bear that in mind. This is a relatively expensive keyboard in terms of just keyboards in general. When you look at the features, it does kind of make sense, but this you can pick up somewhere in the region of in between 50 to 90 pounds here in the UK. The price does jump massively depending where and when you're buying it. Uh, there are been special offers on Amazon, things like that, so we'll put links for that in the video description so you can check it out. If maybe you're looking for a used bargain, then you can actually find these on eBay and other, obviously, second-hand sites where you can pick them up for basically 20, 30 pounds. So if the idea of this is something you like, but the price potentially isn't, then certainly having a quick scour on eBay might be worth it. And I'll put some links for that in the video description also. So media keys, like we said, so we've got all the usual stuff there, so you can play, pause, etc. That works in Windows and it works in iOS, which I've tested, which you've probably seen on the screen right now. Also, the command buttons, I haven't got a Mac to try this on, but okay, I'm everybody. sure that these do work reliably. In between the two modes, obviously, like I said, press the function key and O to go into Windows mode, function key and P to go into Mac or iOS mode, so that works out fine. Number lock button you've got there, you've got your keypad, like I said. Would have been nice to have had a illuminated number lock button or caps lock button. That, sadly, is something that we miss out on due to the fact we've got great battery life. They have cut away some of those other things such as LEDs to tell you what is actually going on. Although if you do install the Logitech option software, you will get a brief pop-up to say that the caps lock's on or number lock's on. But other than that, that is it. So you probably are gonna have to press the caps lock or number lock button a couple of times just to get the pop-up to see which mode is actually in, which yeah, is a little bit of a pain, but not the end of the world. Something else which may be a little bit of a distraction for those of you that are planning to use this as a, a literal multi-function device, and that is the arrow keys down here. So if you're a gamer and you're like me, you use the arrow keys rather than the keys over here, then this may be a little bit problematic for some, especially if you've got somewhat sausage-like fingers. Although saying that, I'm uh, endowed with bowyers myself and I actually found it quite good, even playing things like CSGO where I use the arrow keys all the time. It worked flawlessly and actually did work out very well. The very limited travel on the buttons actually makes it a little bit quicker. And actually, compared with some of the mechanical keyboards I've used in the past, this actually does seem surprisingly responsive. So that's pretty much it for the keys. Other things of note on the side here, which is something which I didn't notice originally when I opened this in one of our live streams, which uh, you should definitely check out. There is actually an on-off button, so there is a physical hardware button. The keyboard itself will also go to sleep, and also the LED, which shows up at the top here when the keyboard is on, that goes off after about five seconds to save battery power. Also, other illuminations on the keyboard, for the one, two, and three, when you press the button, it will light up to tell you which one it's on. If you press and hold those buttons to synchronize or to pair your device with your Bluetooth, it will flash fast to say they're in pairing mode, that kind of stuff, but once that's all done and dusted, those lights will stay off apart from a brief time when you press it to switch between the modes. Something else which I find a little bit frustrating is the, uh, the battery release on the back. So this is where the battery is held. So in order to get this down, there is actually an indentation there, but it's almost impossible to do. So I find it easier just to grip it at the top here and push down, it clicks off 
and then you can gain access to the batteries. Powered by two AAA batteries, Duracells are included, and also this is where the unifying receiver is stored, so you can keep that to one side. You don't have to use the unifying receiver if you don't want to, so if you're using this just on Bluetooth devices, then you can leave that securely tucked away, no problems there. And actually on the back there are rubber feet as well, so you've got rubber feet in the corners and also one there, and it does actually keep itself really firmly planted on the desk. I'm not gonna wobble it too much because it'll move the camera before it moves the keyboard, but it does stay planted really nicely. And for those of you that are wondering what the keys actually sound like, here's a recording I did a little bit earlier so you can listen to the key typing sounds. So there you go, that's the sound of the keyboard in action. Uh, yeah, I'm not exactly the fastest typer, but hopefully you get an idea of what the sound quality is like. Let's also take a look at the software so you can see how that all works. Okay, so today we're taking a look at the Logitech K780. This is a quick little voiceover I've done in OBS, just so you can see the software. Now the first thing I would suggest if you're using this in a Windows environment, the first thing you wanna do is to head over and get the unifying software, which will look something like this on your desktop. This will allow you to connect the device a lot easier. They do have instructions on the box as you're probably seeing a cutaway of at the moment, but it does seem to be considerably easier if you use the Logitech unifying software. So let's have a quick look at that. So this is the unifying software. You can go in, it basically tells you how to set it up. You can connect up to six compatible devices. Go into the advanced section here and you can see what is actually connected. So we've got our keyboard, which is a K780 paired already. You can choose to pair a new device to the unifying receiver. So if you're adding another mouse, such as the Logitech Master, you can do that. You can update firmwares, all that kind of stuff. Check for updates, etc., etc. So we can close that one down. And the next one we want to take a look at is going to be the Logitech Options. So this is where you're going to want to go to configure your keyboard to your own personal preferences. You can change certain things. So at the top here it shows you your main buttons for your three devices and you can change those in easy switch or it'll tell you what's actually connected. So currently, as you can see, the PC I'm actually using this at the moment, which is number one, is my Windows 11 device, which is the streaming PC. My second device is my iOS device, which is my iPhone. And my third device is my other Windows PC, which is my video editing PC. So I can quite easily switch between the three and control them. So if I'm perhaps doing a stream and I'm using one PC for the stream, one PC for the footage, etc., I can switch between the two and control OBS, those types of things. Very handy, somewhat of a niche thing, but certainly is very handy. You can also go in there and restore defaults, all that kind of stuff. Click on more, it'll give you more information about the software and you can actually disable certain keys, make backups of your configuration, do updates, all that kind of stuff. And if you're having problems, there's a section there where you can pair different devices or get help on how to pair devices. So let's close that one down. So that is the easy switch section. So in keyboard, you can change certain things. So on the top row, we've got the home button, the right click button and the back button. That is their defaults if you want to. You can go in and you can choose what that button actually does instead. So choose on more. You've got options for a calculator, those kinds of things, which can be handy. Some people like to have a calculator button. Close desktop. Yeah, basically you get the general idea. You can configure that how you want to. The same can be done with those three buttons. Also, you've got your search button. So if you're using Windows 10, if I press the search key, it'll come up and it'll go straight into our search section, which is uh, quite handy. Again, you can if you want to with the home button that currently is set to open up a browser as you can see there so that is a browser button but again you can change that to whatever you want something else which is really useful if you want to you can choose to have the f1 to f12 keys as standard function keys rather than being the media keys as they are at the moment if you do that though obviously it is going to interfere with buttons one two and three so yeah potentially you might want to leave that as it is if you want to use the function keys when they're in media mode, all you need to do is to press and hold the function key and the appropriate key to use the standard thing. So function F5, refresh windows, that kind of thing. Also, you get information here about the battery life of the keyboard and also 
how you're connected. So this is currently connected using the unified receiver. If we go into number two, then it says, obviously it's gonna grade it out because it's currently connected to my iPhone. If I go into number three, it's not gonna show any information because it's connected to my other device. If you install the software on your other device, obviously you'll get the same layouts and it will be appropriate to whatever you're doing. So there we go, we're back to device number one, battery level's full, and we are currently connected. You can if you want to, you can log in so you can save your settings into Logitech's cloud. And also if you've got specific requirements for applications, you can choose specific applications. So you can have application specific settings. You can toggle that on or off, however you see fit. So anyway, that is the software for the Logitech K780. So there you go, quite a nice software suite. Logitech itself, uh, generally uh, their software always seems to me a little bit on the buggy side. And certainly I did find in using the software and trying to change modes and things, some things didn't always happen as expected. For instance, when I paired the keyboard with my third device, which was my Windows video editing PC, for some reason it just didn't show up. It just said not connected, even though it was working absolutely fine. So do expect some minor little bugs and things in the software. Also, I can't stress enough when you're setting it up for the first time, if you're setting it up with a Windows device, make sure you install that unifying software first of all, otherwise you'll be sat there for ages, press in the button, hold it for three seconds, then press in function and P to get it into Windows mode, etc. and it just won't pair. So do make sure you install that unifying software. It only asks you for a six digit code to enter. Make sure as well when you enter the six digit code, which comes up on the screen, that you do physically press the enter key after you've typed it in. If you don't press the enter key, it will not register and it, yeah, it basically still won't work. So a few little things there in Logitech's setup, which uh, can be kind of gotchas for some people, but hopefully this video is going to help you with that. So if you are considering getting one of these, at least now you're fully armed with all the facts and you know how to set it up. If you've got any comments or questions, please feel free to do so in the comment section below. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Oh, and I should say also, Thanks to Ugly Bob for sending it to us. Thanks for watching.